Are you thinking about buying or selling a home or a real estate professional and want to keep up with the latest Twin Cities market news, stats, and trends? Then come hang out with us for a little while. Hi, I'm Kirk Duckwall, and joining me, Jilly Jenkins, I'm Chad back. Preby. Yeah. Good to see you, Jilly. Good to We're see you. We're all back. You guys. We're all back. It's, been, it's been, been a little while since the last time any of us have recorded. We're so. all back a little tanner. Got the band back together. Yeah, we're getting the band I, back I together, like it. guys. Do you know what hasn't really changed, though? Rates. Oh. I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> <laughs> they kind of went down for a split second. Well, I had yeah. one client yeah. really jump on that real fast. Well, yep. they're, they're back actually down close to that. I mean, it, it's been this game between about 7%, and we saw it get up as almost as high, depending on the lender, is like 75 uh, Keep in mind, if there's lenders watching out there, we're just talking about baseline, what we're seeing coming you know, from – uh, mortgage market guide is the averages. We understand that people can buy down rates and right. whatever. Mm, yeah. But yeah, no, the ad, we, we saw it go from about seven up to anywhere close to about seven and a half. And now we're back down at 6.99. Yeah. Yeah. Right? So yeah, you sent me a message this morning, Chad, awesome. 6.99, mm-hmm. or maybe it was last night. <laughs> oh, yeah. For the rate, have, yeah. rate updates. Yes. Chad keeps us updated. Well, I saw this great. Um, post and it was just looking at the interest rates over you know since like the mid 70s and, and you know yeah. ranging anywhere from two and point seven five all the way up to 14 percent right yeah and so i had a client get under two wow i know that's right yeah that's amazing was it a va think, loan no but it was with i want to say um what is it usaa is okay. That, am I thinking yeah, of that right? Yeah. Well, that would be probably VA then. It was yeah. probably a VA USAA. He it wasn't right. a veterans loan, oh. but it was something through the well, USDA. The pr- no. No oh, USDA. No, it wasn't sure? that either. No, it was okay. something where he had veterans in his family. Oh, okay. Yeah, so probably. So he was able USAA, to get yeah. benefits kind of through using the. Is it US? USAA yeah. does yeah. does family yeah. programs. Yep. Yeah. 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 Pass down there. Good for him. It was the that's lowest awesome. one I ever saw. I was like, that's free money, man. Yeah. Let's get you a bigger house. Don't touch that one. <laughs> I know. You own that house the rest of your life. I know. <laughs> Don't you can't, ever you sell can't it. You can't move. You can't move. Ever. <laughs> I see a lot of uh, marketing uh, stuff going on for cash out refinances right now. And, and I will just say this out there. If you have equity in your home and you have a low interest rate on your first mortgage, I don't think it's necessarily uh, a good idea to refinance that mortgage, but rather talk to a banker that can do a a home equity line of credit. Mm -hmm. Keep that low rate. I understand cash out refinances are important uh, for certain situations, but again, if you have the equity, do a line of credit. Don't refinance your mortgage. And if you've been in your house for a couple years, you probably have some equity sitting there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. From the growth of Definitely. the past several years. Well, that was so I'm working on putting together the notes for the meeting today. And mm-hmm. one of the things home values in 2012 were at, in the Twin Cities area, was like 175000 was the, the median. median home price, wow. right? Right. It's now like three. 75 or something like that yeah, right so say, up over double um of, of where where it was because so. i got licensed in 12 yeah okay. and so i have only worked on an up market yeah. since 12 which yeah, is tw- 12 blowing. actually that was it, i i always look back at 2012 and think to myself oh that was you know that was a a bad year but actually home sales were rising in yeah. 12 yeah so 12 was when you could still go do showings and have just like the gutted, vacant <laughs> foreclosure <laughs> from like Chase Bank or something yeah. that they had forgotten about and had been there for five years. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 You don't see that anymore. There. Yeah. No, numerous people and animals had lived there. Right. <laughs> so I don't miss that. <laughs> Today, we're going to deep dive uh, in our next segment into home buying mistakes. Now, the reason I want to touch on this is we're going to be walking into pretty much the best home buying opportunity. And I know I've been saying that over the last year when we were coming into winter, I had said this is going to be the best opportunity for home buying last year. I think it's going to be even better this year. Why? Mm-hmm. Because it's an election year. So we've seen a lot of improvement for buyers out there over the last couple of years when it comes to negotiation. Uh, you know, home prices itself have not been going up at that 
eight and 11 percent rates oh, yeah. you know this said more along the lines of the average so um and then if you you work with the seasonality of our market there's opportunity there but right. with this opportunity people tend to want to jump in jump in quickly and therefore end up making a whole bunch of mistakes that can be very costly or costly as far as maybe they don't even get the house or be able to buy something so we're right. going to deep dive into that in the next segment Quickly, though, before we get to that, I just want to talk about where our market stands since last time uh, we recorded. And, uh, you know, we're, we're at that kind of, I, I'm going to say peak time of year, not peak because of, of velocity, but more so we're coming up to inventory rising. Uh, prices are up there as well. And we're kind of clearing that hump. And this is where that that opportunity arises for buyers. So new listings, we're seeing um, down week over week, uh, 1,535 down to 1,358. Um, but new listings overall are up 5.4% in the last three months over the same time last year. While pending sales, flip side here, we have uh, pending sales uh, dropping off week over week as well, uh, 1086 down to 1061. These are down 3.5%, uh, just last week down 12%, but mm -hmm. the, the rolling average 3.5. So with higher listing volume and lower uh, pending sales. Therefore, we see our inventory on the rise. And so there, not a big change week over week, uh, 9,008 uh, up to, or 9,108 up to 9,116. This uh, week over week is up 12.2%, but inventory overall 16.8% over last year this is that's great that opportunity mm -hmm. that's for a lot for buyers out there so have options yeah yes mm -hmm. and we're seeing um this pan out like the total number of buyers isn't that much different than last year uh when we look at the total number of showings it's you know it's only off by a Hundred showings or something. It's not a major mm -hmm. difference out there okay. in the marketplace. So just about as many buyers. And that makes sense because interest rates are almost identical to, to where they were at the uh, same time last year. So the right. same amount of buyers are, are jumping in. If we look at our showings per week per listing, this is a great gauge just as far as, you know, how fast are things moving out there. And when I see this number go below four, that's again that's that kind of light bulb moment for buyers you should really start considering this may be when i want to inject myself into the market right um so yeah so ultimately this puts our our market meter uh at 4.32 this is a stable market range so no longer a seller's market and we're within, you know, maybe weeks of it being into what I would say is buyer's market range. Like a light buyer's market or? Yeah, a light yeah. buyer's. Even when we look at just, let's say, the 250 to 500 price range, that's at like, I think it was at a, a 5.89, if I remember correctly, which is still mm. that stable market. Mm -hmm. No yeah. longer sellers. Um, so it's something to keep an eye on if you're seriously considering um getting into buying a home. Okay, in the next segment, we're going to deep dive again, as I mentioned, on home buying mistakes. Make sure you check out all of our past shows at TwinCitiesRealEstateShow.com, as well as our free home buyer and seller guides under publications. We're going to take a quick break, and we'll be right back. Kirk Duckwell here again with the Twin Cities Real Estate Show. Our local sponsors are Bricks Real Estate, Network Title, Eric Bloomstrand and Chad Preby with Bell Bank Mortgage, and James Tufson with the Preserve Group. Welcome back to the Twin Cities Real Estate Show. Today, we're going to deep dive in this segment into home buying mistakes. Mm. Getting um, ready for making the big move. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Well, the thing is, 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 is it's an exciting time. It's, it's something people have probably put a lot of, of thought into, like, you know, when are we going to buy a home? When, 
you know, what, what's our last apartment? When, when is this going to happen? What is it that we're looking for? But then when that moment comes, they tend to rush into it. Mm-hmm. And pretty much, and we know this through the research we've done and checking on some third-party research, that almost all home buyer mistakes come because of rushing, right? Yeah, Making snap decisions and when you read about the regrets or the mistakes it's all basically leads to that right um now does that mean when you find the house that you what i call the house you really 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 want you don't act quickly no not at all but you want to make sure that you're educated to know what to do how to do it how to approach this so you act quickly comfortably and don't put yourself into uh, a position where you're overpaying for a property or your pre-approval isn't as rock solid as you want it and and things Mm -hmm. kind of uh, end up coming apart so well kind of in my opinion you're going to overpay for every property that is the market (laughs) that if you want to own a house and get out of rental that's what you have then to do. Then explain the what hundred and sixty nine thousand dollar house that I yes. got somebody in December. Well, yeah, <laughs> I remember was it that half burnt down. It was I'm not. Kidding. No, no, it was no, actually moving ready. Nice place. Truthfully, it, it that's just the market though. Yeah. And yeah. so be prepared for some sticker shock. Make sure you're working with a lender that knows what they're doing, and that isn't going to like bait and switch you on rates or something. Okay. Sticker shock versus overpaying are two different things, right? right. Somebody's expectation, mm-hmm. I can get a four-bedroom, three-car garage in Egan for two seventy-five, and then they find out, no, it's four twenty-five. That's that's not overpaying. That's just the, they're setting their bar a little. Low. Yeah. Well. <laughs> Yeah, but Housing on one of the websites I was not... looking at, the payment's only fourteen hundred a month. <laughs> yeah, All right. where I had I, I was talking to a young lady the other day, and she said, "You know, I was online. I'm not going to name the company. You know, you can Google, and there's a bunch of companies out there that will show you a property, right? Yeah, and uh, it's it was a four hundred twenty five thousand dollar house, and it yeah. said the monthly payment was fourteen hundred a month. What was no. the preset down like payment at eighty yeah. percent? Yeah. She was she was yeah. excited, right? The client I was talking to was like, "How can how does this happen?" I said, "Well, that's that's misleading." How but much I, was it down? Oh, it was off by. I mean, that was like it was one of those marketing um, websites where it was like fifty percent down, credit rating yeah. of an eight twenty. You know, yeah. uh, fine print, just no like we talked about. Oh, you know, yeah, asterisk, 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 right? So yeah, it's just, I think that your number one thing to do when you're getting ready to buy is interview agents. Ask them how many transactions they've done in the past year. Yes. I did one three years ago. (laughs) Yeah. I do one for my family members every, every other year, you know, ask them how many transactions they've done a year on average. What is it like eight ish transactions? An average agent does in Minnesota a year. I'm not saying that that is what you should be shooting for. I'm not saying you should be shooting for someone that does a hundred transactions a year. They're not going to have time for you. You know what I mean? Honestly, but Make sure that they're doing work yeah. this year, currently. <laughs> in today's market. Yes. They know what's going on right now in this market. Mm-hmm. And then ask them for three lenders to talk to. And then you can talk to those lenders. You can ask around to friends and family. Who did you work with with lenders? Please work with a local lender. Please, yes. If you're going to work with a lender locally, or in general, any lender you're going to work with, get their cell number if they're not able to give you your cell number because it's company policy but it's a 1-800 all you need to do to get hold of me is hit pound (laughs) and then the employee number three four nine six four eight nine five oh my gosh (laughs) good luck with that like working with the va i'm kidding (laughs) (laughs) but seriously if your lender is not willing to give you their their cell phone number or if they give you a cell phone number their cell phone number and they're not answering that's not the lender for you yeah, and one thing to remember too is, uh, and we're not here to hack on lenders. That's that's mm-hmm. not what this is designed for. But when you are working with a big box bank or a credit union or a company that is their doors are open Monday through Friday eight to five, 
you're going to have a service issue when you're trying to buy a house or sell a yeah. house because they're not going to be available for you in the evenings or on the weekends. And that's when you need to be available. Yeah. It's unbelievable. I feel a I've lot had... of calls from, from your brokerage and, um, you know, it's, it's, it's cool for me to hear that because it's, I mean, that's our lifeline, right? You got to be available 24 seven, but I like what you said though. You have to be able to, to, to sell your value proposition especially in today's market with the lawsuit coming up and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. One of the biggest mistakes, you know, getting back to our show, one of the biggest mistakes you can be or make, like Kirk said, is being in a rush. Yeah. Therefore, you don't have time to interview your agents and loan officers. Mm -hmm. And you're probably going to end up going with someone that sounds really good. They're a good salesperson. And then you're going to regret it. Right. Yeah. And Go it really... on showings with more than one agent. Yeah. yeah. And have those showings be ran pick go on three exploratory showings with each agent pick your favorite one and have that mls information be sent to the lenders that you're interviewing and run the numbers for your pre-approval on those lenders so one See great one Absolutely. great way to make sure that you give yourself the time needed is to prepare yourself either well in advance you know start your home searching and and discussions six months before your lease mm -hmm. ends yes. that's like the okay. perfect timing yeah is time in mm -hmm. real estate goes fast <laughs> what do i mean by this okay you start the interview process exploratory homes process uh going on showings uh that right there could be 30 days. Right. Just yeah. because because the types of homes you're checking out, not all of them might be available on one given week and, and trying to you know work with, with schedules and figuring everything out. That's a 30-day period of time. Then you actually deep dive into your home search, figure out what it is you want. That could be another 60 days. So yeah. we are now up to three months burnt, right? Yeah. Okay, then we have time to closing, right? You find a house, you get the offer accepted. Well, this is going to be 30 days to 90 days. There goes your six months. Fast. Yeah. Right? Now, here's the thing is your payments, if you want to set it up this way, typically are not going to start for at least 30 days, if not closer to 60 from the time you close, depending on when your closing date is and, and that. So you can give yourself the time you need to move in, fix things up, all of that. Again, time in real estate, you need it. So oh, flies by. If you are, you know, three months out, start going, okay, maybe I want to get on a month to month plan. Mm -hmm. And I understand that it costs more, a few hundred dollars more a month, maybe for that month to month. Well worth it. Because if you yeah. take your time and you do this wisely, you can easily save yourself 10 or $20,000 on the purchase. Right. So that's worth month a few hundred bucks. Renters, I would say so. That's yeah. like the best scenario for my clients. If they don't own a house already and they're in rental, if you can get on to month to month and that's the plan and we'll figure everything out from there. And then we can get the calendars for closing date lined up with the lenders so that you get that 60 day period instead of a 30 day period for waiting for your first mortgage payment to kick in. That's golden. Yeah. So in this, it also, you know, th there, there can be some credit benefits potentially, right? Because mm -hmm. if they start early. Oh yeah. Right. What have you it, seen, Chad? <laughs> well, I, I will say this. It's never too early to start the process. And I've been saying that for 20 plus years, just for the reason you just mentioned, your credit. Mm -hmm. Okay. I, there's so many times where I, I talk to someone and they say, yeah, I have an 800 credit score. And then all of a sudden I pull their credit and it's in the low 600s because they forgot about a medical collection or something that they had way back in the day that is now coming back to haunt them, right? So their 800 credit score that they probably had is now a 650. Mm -hmm. And it's a $400 Comcast collections list. I see that a lot. <laughs> right, I right, see right, a lot right. of old Comcast or cable bills that slaughter people's credit scores, mm -hmm. right? And they don't even know about it. Right. They're like, well, I've never even received a collection letter in the mail. So it's $200 collection, $400 collection, smears your 800 credit score. They don't know it. So to start the process early, we can pay that collection off, do a credit rescore, and get your credit score back into that upper 700 range. Right. And where this is important is 
you think you're saving money because you're rate shopping and you're in a rush two days before you you know, uh, the offer deadlines up, mm-hmm. right? Where is if you started early, that correction on your score of a hundred points is going to help your interest rate far more than any single day shopping that you do, mm-hmm. right. right? Because your interest rate, and this gets into the the formula to interest rates. So often people are trying to get to this end, which is the, the, the interest rate, Correct. but you need to know the calculation. Yes. And one of those is credit score. And yes. if you can adjust the credit score to be better, that's going to bring your rate down. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I was just meeting with a young first-time homebuyer yesterday in my office, and she's about a year out, right? And and she asked me, are you sure you want to meet with me? I'm a year out. And I said, I want to meet with you as soon as you are able, yeah. right? A year, two years, it doesn't matter. The reason that is is just what we're talking about. We're putting a plan together. Mm-hmm. This person's a first-time homebuyer. They know nothing about a mortgage, let alone buying a home. So, yes, I want the opportunity. When you're out, when you're out interviewing your loan officers and your real estate agents, Ask them, are you available to meet with me when I'm available nights, weekends? You know, most people work an eight to five job. Mm-hmm. So if you're you're working with someone that's not available for you in the evenings, they're going to fail you, right? It's just the way it that's is. Just the deal. That's, yeah, that's the business. It, you have to ask those questions, and it may feel uncomfortable, but reality is, um, we're here for you. And if we're not able to answer our phone or get back to you by email on a on an evening or a Saturday or Sunday you're probably going to lose out on that property that you love, right? Or you're going to put in an offer and maybe get it accepted on Monday when we can get a hold of that lender, if you're lucky. But you're going to have no idea what your numbers are going to look like for that specific offer you're making. So you're kind of making an offer a little blinded yeah. where you, you don't know what your monthly payments breakdown is going to look like. Yeah. Cause that's kind of what I ask for every pre-approval for my clients that are property specific. You can't be given, I've had lenders. Have you ever had this happen? I've had lenders give me templates and say, fill this oh, out. Oh yeah. Now fill this for out. their estimates yeah. for their pre-approval. Pre-approval. pre-approval oh, yeah. Just, yeah. Um, Oh, you need a property specific. Here's a template. Just put the address in. I'm like, oh, that's absolutely not going to happen. Yeah. It's just a way for them to not have to run the numbers and do the work. Yeah. That's a good point, Jilly. I mean, here's the thing. And, and I'm just gonna be blunt about it. If you're working with a lender and they're not going to send you numbers, Start shopping around yeah. right now. Well, I just ran into one where talking about, you know, not being there for you, that this lender had an app. And what you do is you'd enter in the property, you'd enter in the price, and it would kick out the pre-approval letter if everything worked. However, if it didn't work and the numbers were close, he had to get a hold of his LO. The LO was never available on the weekends. We missed out on three properties oh. because... It was Monday each time, and you know. Well, it comes back to the whole um, in this day and age, right? With our iPhones and our smartphones or whatever kind of technology you have, we're we're dialed in for instant results. Mm-hmm. When you're buying a house or any, let's say if you're doing a real estate transaction, there's nothing instant. No, you I mean, have to physically timeline. and manually talk to somebody. Yeah. If you're working with your phone and you're putting information in there and it spits you back a pre-approval letter. I'd be a little skeptical on that because yeah. you're not physically talking to someone. I could see where if you've already talked to the customer and you've talked to the real estate agent and, and you guys are all on the same page about numbers, that could work out okay. But there's so many variables in there that could throw that off, right? Yeah. If we're working on that automated system, it, it's it's just a little slippery in my mind. But So I wanted to move on to a, a mistake that we, we don't necessarily see as much and i know really have worked with clients to educate on this is post accepted offer where you know somebody needs a new car or Uh. thinks they need new furniture or thinks boat starts boat starts ordering i need a boat for my new garage come on yeah (laughs) and starts ordering the expensive leather sectionals on their credit cards yes Yes. Yeah. yeah do not do that 
Um, wow. And when you, <laughs> yeah, just, just do not do that. And here's the thing. What I explain to people, and I, I, I hit this right away in the process because it's this important. If you have to, you know, obviously we have to get to work, right? We need an automobile to get to work in most mm-hmm. cases. If your automobile crashes or you don't have one, it, it, it dies on you and you have to buy a car, great. You have to buy a car, but call your loan officer first. Before you go to the dealership and, and buy a car, make sure you reach out to your loan officer. Tell them what your monthly payment's going to be on that new automobile so they can run the figures for you to make sure you still qualify. Yeah. It is, it is that important because, and I know we were talking before the show, we've all had clients that went out and bought a car in the process, and guess what? They couldn't close on their home because they no longer qualified. That's where it's that important is to always be communicating with your team, your loan officer, your real estate agent, making sure that you're not changing anything financial if you don't have to. Don't open new credit. Don't open new bank accounts. Keep everything exactly the way it is when you got pre-approved. That way it's going to ensure a very smooth process through closing. To pig- to kind of piggyback on that too, Chad, I've had clients that went out and got the, you know, $100,000 car mm-hmm. and now has a $1,000 a month payment. Right. And are no longer able to qualify. Right. For a for a pre-approval. So before they even tried to buy that home, they, they bought a house on wheels. Yeah, yeah. You Good know? point, Jilly. That's huge. So before you make that, if you're in the market to purchase a home in the next, let's say, 12 months to 24 months, mm-hmm. let's, st- let's stand back a little bit and think about before we make a purchase, a large purchase, like a $100,000 automobile, will that affect my ability to purchase a home? That's where we want your thinking to be, right? If you have a plan to purchase a home in the next 12 to 24 months, if there's a large purchase that's going to take place, how is this going to affect my ability to purchase a home? Because, I mean, that affects the debt-to-income ratio, Absolutely. Right? If you want to explain that, maybe. Yeah, and I, I can do that. I had a, I had a gentleman uh, two weeks before closing went out and bought a new Ford F-150. You know, the beautiful truck, $80,000 truck, $1,200 a month payment, yeah. and no longer qualified for the, the home. His credit report expired. We pulled a new credit, and we found that payment there. Dad had to refinance that new truck loan into his name. The dad, So the dad had to step in, mm-hmm. bail out son, refinance it into his name so the son could close on his, on his home. Wow. It, we got lucky. Yeah. The, we were lucky that dad was able to do that. Maybe Otherwise. To, for the dad to, to be able to be that safety net isn't everyone's. Well, not everybody has that yeah, option, resource, right? you know, in the family. And that's a you know a really good point is automobiles are expensive nowadays. You get the three day return policy, right? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's the fourth day. <laughs> I've actually heard of people doing that. Yeah, right? and then you just got to pay the mileage, whatever you put on the vehicle, you pay. Yeah. So, but these are all good reasons why you want to meet with a loan officer and a real estate agent right away. Don't right? rush. Don't rush. As no. soon as as soon as you're thinking about buying a house, or if you're already in a house and you're thinking about upgrading, or if you're an empty nester and you want to go something smaller. Or you just want to sell and go drive around the the country in a van, you know? Right. I would do that. <laughs> just talk talk to somebody before you start making financial decisions. Talk to a loan officer. Talk to an agent. Yep. Get some plan. Make make some game plans. You have a plan. You know, one thing that I've been hearing a lot lately, guys, is that, um, and I've been hearing this from real estate agents. But my lender said we had an approval. I have a pre-approval letter. My lender said the, the loan's approved. And, and if you're a real estate agent listening to this, make sure you're asking your lender, has it been reviewed by a physical person? Or has, it has an underwriter looked system? at it? Because as a loan officer, like I am, I can push a button on my computer mm-hmm. and run it through an automated underwriting service system. Okay. That system's only as accurate as the information being put into it. Mm-hmm. So when we have someone saying, hey, I have a pre-approval, as an agent, ask questions. Has, a, has an underwriter reviewed it? Or is this just an automated approval? Not saying that just an automated approval is bad, but that gauges how experienced that loan officer is that you're working with, mm-hmm. right? That's a big deal. It's just kind of a thing that we're talking about is buyer beware, um, real estate agent beware. It's just ask those questions. I think it ensures a, a more successful process. And correct me if I'm wrong, wrong Chad, but... So some lenders do the automated and that's it. That's their pre-approval. Mm-hmm. And then some lenders kind of fully underwrite the whole financial setup for that client and give them their pre-approval kind of criteria, mm-hmm. stipulations. Um, 
And if you do only the automated up front and then get an offer accepted and move through the sale process, you can find out later on in the process that you're actually not pre-approved for this property, even though we're in it to win it already. Yeah. Because some lenders don't necessarily follow through with the underwriting right away like they should. Yeah, and it's it's so vital. Like even just taking a copy of that pay stub and really just putting your eyes on it, looking at things, right? There's like child support that could be on there, mm -hmm. wage garnishes. I mean, there's there's several factors that can throw that automated mm -hmm. approval off. That the process that I have on my team and we created this and we're not we're not bulletproof, but we're pretty good at what we do as far as we do have a physical underwriter look at every loan before we not every pre-approval letter i mean we know enough to where if it's if it's solid enough we write the pre-approval letter out but my process is we get that into an underwriter income review we call it let's get it looked at why not mm -hmm. we have they're not in a huge rush right well, i think the the big thing is to just don't hit the easy button no if the easy button you. is put in front of you Ask questions, find out because because if you take the time again up front to educate yourself, up front to do the right things, ask the right questions, you know again, biggest financial transaction most people ever make. When when you think about it that way, you may want to take your time and yeah. not rush. And in return, you'll have a much better experience and get the house you really, really, really want. Yeah. yeah. So the Definitely. rushing there it is. does kind of have to be a part of getting the offer in, yeah. getting that inspection done, getting that appraisal in. Like it does happen. Boom, 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 boom. And your agent's supposed to be coordinating all of yep. that as smoothly mm -hmm. as possible yeah. for you. But getting ready to buy should never be a rush. Right. Mm -hmm. You should be planning yeah. ahead. Yeah, exactly. That's 100% right. Well, thank you guys for coming in. Yeah. Uh, yeah, thank was a you good, guys. Good. We should do a, do a selling mistakes one too okay. because there's, again, give you a little hint has to do with rushing. <laughs> yeah. um, no, it's a little deep dive into that in another show. Again, check us out online, TwinCitiesRealEstateShow.com. Kirk Duckwall here again with the Twin Cities Real Estate Show. Our local sponsors are Bricks Real Estate, Network Title, Eric Bloomstrand and Chad Preby with Bell Bank Mortgage, and James Tufson with The Preserve Group. Don't forget to check us out online anytime at TwinCitiesRealEstateShow.com. There you can find all of our past shows, our weekly market updates, along with the latest and greatest searching and researching tools and our free publications to include the Smart Home Buyer Guide and the Smart Seller Guide, along with the Bricks Report, all of these free for you. If you have any real estate questions, Please feel free to give us a call, 651-303-0019. Again, 651-303-0019. Happy to help answer any of your real estate questions or assist with your real estate needs.